You've seen the work from Chris on how these ships were designed, and we've heard from John about the future of customization in-game. And so how does that translate to the web experience and how you get started with customization? So at the beginning, in order to do that, we had to build major systems. The first part was to enlist a bunch of artists and people to help us block shots for all the different customization options. And then out of this came thousands and thousands of layered images that display the different combinations. And to be able to display them in the customizer, we needed to have a dynamic composition system to be able to basically build all these layers into images as you select your options. And to finally deliver the ship to you guys in game once you're done purchasing it, we connect to the diffusion bridge, which is the back end of the game, and we actually edit this document that represents the loadout of your ship by talking directly with the game servers to interrogate the different options that are available. And at the end of this process, this is sent to an entitlement processor that gives you the ship in-game. And so that's basically the gist of how customization works from the web side of things. So enough talk, let's go and take a look at it. So the journey for customization starts directly on the ship page. So as you go through the page, when you get to look at a specific ship that you've selected that you like, you'll now have an option to customize it. And so this customization option will actually launch the customizer that's specific to that ship manufacturer. And so as soon as this is loaded up, you're going to already see uh, in-game shots of the ship uh, that allow you to basically look at all the different angles for that ship. And then on the right, you get different customization sections and options that basically allow you to change materials, uh, skins, and components on the ship. And so as we have here, the Origin Celebration colors are available. And so I can take a look at what that looked like in the different angles of the ship. I can take a look at you know, uh, the reflection of it, change the standard color, go back to the original, compare between them. Out of all these options, I can now go down into the cockpit and basically change the trim of the cockpit and the materials inside. So this is, if you saw John's segment, this is basically how these uh, materials go down is as we edit the document, it goes down into the ship and that changes the component. You can also go down to your yoke if you want to have the sport or standard yoke. These are basically origin design features that uh, are specific to the 300i in this case. Go down to this seat, you can actually change between a standard and a sport seat and change some materials on it, which would basically, if you want to make it you know, all leather, then you can keep going for it and that's all good. Uh, change the finish uh, on, the, on the actual seat. And then as you go down to bedding, so anemones in general, so living areas on the ships are also customizable, allowing you to basically change as many options as you can on it. Packages are basically base loadouts that uh, are predefined by origin, and so uh, they basically change the major components on the ship. And as you go down to the decoration section in this specific ship, uh, you can add different anemones systems uh, that basically change the living area style uh, of that ship. And so as we're going through this customization process, you can see that there's literally thousands and thousands of combinatory options that are possible for each ship. The, the different options change for each ship. The 350R, for example, will have different options and will look different. And so as you launch into the customizer, every ship has a different set of options that you can customize and change. Now, in terms of rules for how this works in the pledge uh, process, and so if you uh, pledge for a ship and add customizations and you decide, ah, you know, I no longer like this ship and you decide to melt it, uh, then uh, you get 100% of the customization value and of the pledge back, uh, just nor as it was normally. So this is a very open system. You cannot buy back customizations and so what goes in your buy back queue is actually a ship chassis, uh, but not the actual customizations. These are uh, basically refunded as store credits and, uh, and that's it. When you choose your customization options, be careful because uh, as you customize a single ship, the only way to recustomize that ship is to trade it in and basically melting it. And so if you decide to go all yellow and that's what you like today and you want to change tomorrow, you'll have to do a trade in in order to change those customizations. In the case of a ship that was upgraded, so if you buy a 300i, you customize it the way you like it, and then you decide to upgrade to a 315p, for example, uh, when you apply the upgrade, your customizations will be melted, you get the value back of the customization, and then the ship chassis is swapped into your, in your pledge just normally. And so that's basically how the rules apply to it. And so obviously this is our tier zero, this is the first 
manufacturer and ship line that we have in the customizer. It, currently, this all of this workflow is currently only available on the platform, uh, but will be available in-game as well, where you'll be able to basically uh, purchase a ship in-game with in-game currency and customize it the way you like it, exactly the same way as it's done online. The current version is only available on the web for now. Obviously, in part of these options, manufacturers can decide that some of these options are locked for a period of time, and so keep looking at the options as some of them will pop up when there are special events, uh, and, and others are only available for a limited time, so take advantage of that. I know we're not using Jax for this, but we had a Galactic Tour video in 2016 where uh, you talked about an origin celebration, didn't you? To be perfectly honest, I can't think of a better way for Origin ships to be celebrated than with drunken revelry. From day one, Origin has been crafting vehicles that are as fun to fly as they are to look at. I'm talking the stuff of locker posters. The kind of ship that few middle-aged pilots can resist the allure of. Sure, people may think you're a pompous ass if you come cruising up to the local Cryastro in one, but what do you care? You own a 350R.